You're listening to the Art of Quantum Healing podcast with your host, Lisa Nadler. Each week we'll be welcoming divine souls who have overcome trauma, mental health addiction, and found next level abundance through mind, body, and soul connection. We will be going deep on one subject to teach and guide you. My mission is to help you high vibe, thrive with inner peace, passion, and purpose, all in the name of evolution. Welcome to another episode of the Art of Quantum Healing. I have we've just honestly we've just had the biggest <laughs> laugh before we even started. So this is going to be very interesting. I've got the gorgeous <laughs> divine Stephen Neff on the on uh, as the guest on this episode, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited. He's sitting in beautiful New Zealand, and I'm jealous as hell. <laughs> so welcome. <laughs> well, you're just behind me, but I'm still two hours in the future. You are no three at the moment. Ooh, it's three. three, that's right. Yeah, it's Ooh, three. That's true. You skipped one. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it's actually, the last three hours were not so great in my life here. And keeping in mind that the world is going a bit hits up at the moment, it's oh. it's actually, God, wherever you look, it's madness. It is but madness. That's, it is madness. But he, here we are. We both have been in madness. We both have been in darkness. Mm. And here we are to tell the tale and actually yeah. to show that that the past does not equal the future and that we are here to actually to actually uh, you know tell our stories yeah because yeah. this the the opposite to addiction in my case or the opposite to mental health problems is connection yeah. so by just Craving. us coming out isn't it but no but us coming out and and telling our stories mm. it suddenly the suffering makes sense it it, does. it it has a purpose it suddenly was no longer for nothing but instead we are here and hopefully someone out there thinks well if these two numb nuts can get their their act together <laughs> then, then i can mm, that's right exactly i've got a chance <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> if there's one purpose in my life to to be a bad example here you go there you go <laughs> that's what i've always said it's like i am no different from anybody else i've just mm. maybe a couple of years ahead of my growth period and my healing and everything in between exactly. it than you are but you can exactly. get here like that trust me i'm no different oh exactly. Exactly. So I'd love to read your little bio. It'd be, I'd love to uh, share with the with the audience exactly the, um, that they can sort of understand a little bit more of you. Um, I'm just going to move a, a technical problem here. Would you <laughs> so, like the arm extenders? Yes, could you please? <laughs> It'd be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, so you're an ethicist. Wow. That's even a story on its own, isn't it? So Stephen is an anaesthetist and has had more than a fair share of trauma in his life. He has tried to drown PST, PTSD, depression, anxiety, and industry doses of vodka, but had to learn the hard way that those critics critters can swim. I love that. I love your sense of humor. It's gorgeous. You've got to have a sense of humor. Nowadays, he lives a very different life where self-love, humanity, integrity, and transparency actually mean something. He hosts the, his own show, My Steps to Sobriety, and has just released the second edition of his book under the same name. So I'm super excited to delve into this. I really am. Like, I mean, for me, I was my my drug of choice was was pills um i loved them mm. i really really did and i had about three years of hitting drugs very very hard until mm. no longer i liked them no longer they liked mm. me and, and and i was an alcohol rep and i met a drug dealer so i had like i had everything uh, on tap my life was like <laughs> okay i've got free alcohol i've got the drugs let's party so yes priceless <laughs> priceless okay that's not bad but then again we alcoholics are we're, we're really good in actually sourcing our poisons oh, isn't yes. it we and it. Mm -hmm. there is never there's never an excuse today is what is it today the 22nd um um oh christchurch is soon it, no yeah christchurch that's right earthquake my god oh, we, we need, need to, to have a drink on them that's right or tomorrow i don't know what tomorrow is hmm today was a good day oh we need to celebrate Today's today a was a day. shit I need day to my sorrows. <laughs> absolutely Today is a think, normal day. Yeah. Let's just reminisce of the good old times. And we have got our various alcohols to go with that. So it's not just the the, the dark bottles that we sort of switch. No. no, no, no. We make a culture out of it. And it is, you sniff the wine. 
then have the, the little cling 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 of the eyes in your in your scotch and you actually i was a converser kind of i knew my wines i knew my wow. various other bits and bobs and you have this this actually nice culture around it yeah, yeah. i must say i felt good you know give me a wine tasting i would typically remember the first two and then thereafter you could give me Chateau de Migraine. I don't care. Doesn't Give it matter. to me. Okay. Most I of became, the bottles stop. Yeah. <laughs> Set later that, down. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I was going to say, I became the queen of manipulation and justification. I could manipulate uh -huh. in my own thing to do it and I could justify the world. I don't know, <laughs> The next day I would justify <laughs> it until I didn't feel like shit. So I kept doing it. It was just. Isn't it? Isn't oh. it? And, and how was your hiding? I was oh, a master of hiding. I woke up and I hit that I was hungover. Uh, then I was hiding, then I was thinking about the alcohol. Then I yeah. hit that I was buying the alcohol, going to various places, making sure that it doesn't look too much. Then I was hiding the alcohol at home. Then I was hiding that I was drinking alcohol. And then I was hiding or trying to hide that I was a little bit drunk. I think, no, I don't know, honey. I, I have not drunk a single drop. <laughs> this is from last night. <laughs> Yeah, that's why it does <laughs> well, oh see, my I god was, for me it was really easy because i was a rep so i an I alcohol see. rep so i would go to, to all the and i would make sure that i scheduled my last few calls it started out at four o'clock then it went to three o'clock then it went to two o'clock then it went to one o'clock <laughs> and i'd make sure i had a nice lunch where i had a couple of drinks so i, I, so, so, I, mean, I manipulated my situation and that's what i became but also, in all fairness, this was part of your life. This was expected to be. Okay, you can't just have a nice limoncello and then, uh, sorry, I don't drink alcohol. As an alcohol rep, I don't think that works. Okay, so job. if you, well, exactly. You know, you do any kind of business yeah. in the former Eastern Europe. I mean, for Christ's sake, you know, anything yeah, goes with true. vodka. So there are many, many parts of the world where alcohol is such a substantial part culture. of social life mm. of culture mm. it's really hard to not do it and but in all fairness i didn't have that that excuse um for me it was just the very first time i had this beautiful beautiful dopamine rush and this mm. beautiful feeling of i love everyone and the world loves me and mm. this is the best thing ever um I, I don't think we we forget that ever. No. So the first rush, the first the first wave of that feel good, uh, mm. dopamine, oxytocin kind of stuff. Oh yes. Yeah. And, and everybody yeah. liked me when I was drunk or when I had drink because oh, I was a completely nice. different. I took a new identity. Who were you? Crazy fun Lisa. Everybody loved Lisa because she was fun. Uh, and, uh, and usually uh, I'd be in the corner, not showing anyone. So, so how did you be an anaesthetist? and drink because i come from a culture where that is absolutely normal um i worked in germany and there is alcohol is okay. is ubiquitous and then uh, certainly in uh in the uk i emigrated to the uk and there bloody hell it was uh normal that you work hard and then you go straight from there to the social club mm -hmm. uh where you get a beer for nothing um and basically then spent the night doing whatever you want to do. Typically that has in, includes members of the opposite sex and it includes more alcohol and those kind of things. Yeah. It was uh, working hard, playing hard. And that was an absolute accepted part of the culture, certainly in the UK. Mm. And then also out here in New Zealand, when I came out here, it was, I mean, there were times when I was not hitting the bottle hard, um, when I was studying for exams, when I was, you know, there were times when, no, but they're equally, uh, I had never learned to deal with trauma or with negative emotions in any other way than trying to numb them mm. and trying to run away from them. So I was very good in, avoiding things and that yeah. was that came quite handy as a doctor because when you work really hard again i came from a from a time when i mean for christ's sake i sound like a like a time warp something like <laughs> that i come from the past when man were real man life and, is you know, moving very fast right now so it's okay one year seems yeah, like 20 years <laughs> well it feels a bit like it i mean nowadays you know that is um 
that, that maybe millennials, if they have to work 30 hours, they are stressed and need to have their special acquittal corner. Um, I'm a derogatory, but only a bit here. Um, whilst the norm when I started in medicine was really that you work 60 hours a week, 70, yeah. 80 hours a week. Normal, wasn't it? Without, exactly. Mm. Weekends would start on Friday morning and end up on Monday lunchtime. And you would work through. Um, if you're lucky, there are a few hours here and there, but that was the norm yeah. when I started. And that was, that was drummed into us. You know, our peers were not different. Um, it, was, it was just different times. Yeah. But unfortunately, those, those different times coined and, and formed my core beliefs. Mm. And even nowadays, I struggle to let that go i must admit yeah, yeah. when i see others who maybe have not the same work ethic and rather actually do relax and actually have probably quite a healthy work-life balance in my eyes in my skewed core belief that looks like they're lazy beep um mm. and it's interesting so there, there is still Oh, there's still things that I am dealing with even now, eight years after rehab, we eight all, years into this, this new does, life. Right? There's always something that pops up. It's just being oh. in this human existence. And you're like, I thought I dealt with that. And it's just a whole new freaking level. So exactly. it's, really, it's, 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 a, it's an ongoing, I always say every day is a school day and every day is a healing day. So you, <laughs> you choose to heal and whether you choose to learn, it's totally up to you. Absolutely. <laughs> and sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. Yeah. And, and that is okay. that's so good yeah. exactly mm -hmm. see i had fought really the last oh four weeks it was this false sense of security because mm -hmm. everything went actually well yeah. and everything i had really a good run and i thought finally this 2020 2021 is finished now here 2022 is my year that's even my what year. i said yeah, yeah it's my year now in the last 24 hours i had four things happening where you just think oh <laughs> You, you can, you can just, you can yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fuck off, <laughs> honestly. So I, I had just before this, before we were met, meeting here, I had a bit of a pity party, and said, but you, I think you have to. I think you do because oh. otherwise you trap all the emotions in, and if you don't actually look at it and go, oh my god, and 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 allow oh. yourself to feel it then you're yep. going to squash it down and that's when the coping mechanisms come in. So uh, absolutely. And this absolutely. is the duality yeah. of our life and learning that uh, it's not always a fucking high. Sometimes mm. it's, we're down in here and it's okay to be down in here. <sighs> Give yourself permission to feel it, you know, which we don't. That's exactly what I did. Uh, yeah. And it was actually beautiful. But before that came that I actually knew what that wave of neurochemicals mm. was because i in the past prior to rehab i was like pavlov's dog i completely responded subconsciously yeah. often with anger and resentment because i could not simply not i didn't know what was going on in me mm. and one of the very first things that you get taught in a good rehab is what are these feelings what is happening how does joy actually feel like mm. without drugs how does does a sadness feel like anger. without you numbing it anger to. yeah exactly to exactly yeah touche nice one yeah. um and shame and guilt how does it feel like and then you then you learn in a good recovery program you learn to look at what is going on in your head yeah. and you you make all these beautiful beautiful tables of okay um he was involved he did that to me that's how it made me feel and then boom so this is resentment table kind of a thing anger table mm -hmm. and i did that and oh that was a big table i must say <laughs> and then a bit later you we come back you. to the same table and they put another column on there oh. and now say well actually what was your contribution yeah. to the whole thing? Oh, oh, oh what, do you mean? what do you mean? Me? You yeah, that was not on the cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Oh, you too. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that is that is what what is happening. You mm. suddenly you make you make headway. You think you're winning, and then suddenly someone holds the mirror again in front of your face, and you think, oh, oh shit, something and has to heal. Great. <laughs> that's right and that was that was the first four weeks and i yeah. thought i was i was i was you know after rehab great when they discharged me i thought that's it now i've done it 
How I've long done. I've, I've done. For? How long was four rehab? weeks? Four weeks. Four weeks. Um, in inpatient. And that was the best time ever, um, because it's so beautiful. They take you out yeah. out of your life and put yeah. you into this protective bubble, and your you can actually focus. What fucks you up because you've created this environment so that you can be who you are in this, so mm. you can have you all your different things fed. So it's the uh, 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 oh, uh, uh, it's the hardest space to be in to transform. Uh -huh. It was good. I mean, I must say, <laughs> oh, please. That is the only thing that changes in, in a recovery is everything. Yeah. And that is truly what I happened in that. my life. So rehab was the best thing ever. And I often say every 16 year old should have a mandatory month in rehab mm. to actually learn about their emotions, learn about feelings, about what drives them, why they respond to a trigger in a certain way Should these kind of things yeah oh please how to process this emotions be... how to... please if we if when we were children if we were especially and i know from new zealand and you know like mm. there's a lot of staunch people in new zealand it was like you know if we could learn how to process and just kick it let our kids just kick and scream and release what they need to release and be angry mm. and be yeah. scared yeah. And those those lower dimensional things we need to feel because when we feel them we heal when we feel them we release them and if you live yep. it, if you don't do it, then it's just all this That's right. ah, trapped in your mm -hmm. body. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <gasps> there is. Yeah, I could not agree more. But we mm. And I believe we paid a price specifically here in New Zealand, having ha still got the highest teen suicide rate in the OECD. So this is horrendous but it's not just oecd we are uh, not just teens we are actually the, the whole mental health system in our country here regrettably is 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 broken I think it's everywhere simply now. true simply because we are a small country with a finite yes. amount of money yeah. and a huge need and therefore it is so hard to actually find people um through systems that are cheap or for free um so, so state-run kind of things yeah. you can actually find people like you we can find people like like other other um specialists in rehabilitation yeah. they are out there yeah. but they're certainly not so easy to access um as they maybe should be for mm. for people who are caught in the trap of poverty and the trap of mental illness in the trap of addiction and gang life Absolutely. um those kind of things it, yeah. it is hard it is really, really really hard to break those cycles and especially mm. also if you grow up in like those generational cycles are very hard to break Isn't they it? really really are and one of the things that people for example do not take into account is the alcohol fetal syndrome uh, it's basically Absolutely. that when a mum drinks or uses drugs during the pregnancy, unfortunately, it damages the brain of the child. Yeah, so I've spoken recently to a uh, a prison warden, uh, for the lack of a better word here, uh, who is working in one of the youth centers. And he told me that about 90% of the inmates have got uh, fetal alcohol syndrome, um, which is basically they literally, it stays within the generations because their lives have been stuffed from the word go yeah. um, before they were even on this earth. Yeah. So it's therefore, this, there is a generational kind of thing mm -hmm. at the flip side and and when we're talking about generation maybe we should also talk about the fact that there is indeed there are alcoholic genes um so there are at least 50 genes um yep. in uh in the in our genome that have mm. been detected that are making it more likely for you to become alcoholic i know i've got an addictive personality that's why i never did any uh, hard drugs because i knew if i did uh, i would definitely be dead I absolutely knew it yeah, I, because my grandfather, he d had uh, P PTSD from being yeah. in the war and he just drank and drank and drank and drank and drank and ended up just drinking himself to death. And, you know, it's it's definitely see, in my blood. See, it's always difficult also to say there, would this person have been exposed, uh, your grandfather? Mm -hmm. Let's imagine we take a time capsule 
uh, time machine go back and actually bring the lessons that we have learned in the last 20 years about PTSD to this silent generation yeah. after the Second World War yeah. and expose them to the healing that is nowadays possible with PTSD. Well, would response. he really have become the alcoholic? Um, would would therefore right does he really have a genetic does he really have a genetic predisposition mm. or is it just that your family has routinely gone through so much shit and no one has ever taught them how to yeah. heal how mm. to get yeah. better that they then saw okay for that he went into alcohol uh, yeah oh, oh yeah oh it feels good in the in the absence of anything else yeah. Yeah. so we need to be careful is it really the circumstances yeah. that drive generations yeah. in the same family to it yeah. or is there indeed actually an alcoholic yeah. gene and it will be interesting so, to be able to assess that and take it back into and, and to see indeed. because i mean yeah. I, I really do believe too that the old ways the old paradigms of doing healing or doing any even even like and i i think that every different healing modality has its place but i yeah. also believe that there's different ways of being doing it now and everybody is different and everybody actually heals in a different way and so with, with, with like for me sitting it to a psychiatrist um and just talking about my feelings all the time and, and talking about my trauma was making me worse because every time you talk about something <laughs> and I, I don't give, i love psychiatrists and psychologists like i'm not having but you know for me personally i needed to release it it was tr it was like something i needed to release and every time i thought about it and talked about it my my you, your brain doesn't know whether you are reliving it and it's actually happening again so every time i was talking about it i was causing more trauma in my body mm. so i was in a real cycle of, of abuse within myself even just doing that so it's mm. I, I just think there are so many new ways of healing and Absolutely. dealing with things that are available Absolutely. to us and and if you know if the, if the audience is listening just see what resonates with you and try something different like don't think that you have to I go like down that. the normal way I of like doing that. something yeah okay. it's huge. and what is the what is the normal way there is what is normal is, anymore exactly <laughs> to share. and, oh, and normal people normal people scare me anyhow so no 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 no, no. um I'm I'm a weirdo uh, and I'm a, I'm a, a proud weirdo. weirdo. Come on, I'm proud for it. Um, <laughs> it is, we are all unique, and yeah. I think all our traumas are unique. And often enough, our the path to to salvation, to healing, is unique. For some of us, Jesus Christ touches you, and they and and people who that happens to, they are very happy, and they find. They find solutions within either the body of the church or through the reading of scripture, etc. Yeah. And that's beautiful. Yeah. For for someone like me who is who is really a humanist or an agnostic, well, I'm sorry, I, I struggled with the word God. Um, but then in in very quickly in rehab, we said, yes, there is God, but God is not necessarily someone out there, but just rather the group of orderly drunks, yeah. a group of druggies. In yeah. other words, a the something that is bigger than you. And that that suddenly made sense to me. Yeah. So yeah. that was that was an example of religion versus not religion. But yeah. you could also say, well, actually, there's the Western medicine that can have a lot of things to offer. Mm -hmm. Cognitive behavioral therapy, yeah. the help of medications to at least calm down the symptoms of a withdrawal mm -hmm. to start off with, then help you sleep, uh, get you through the hard times to start off with, yeah. and then start working with you on a psychology, psychiatry level. Yes, That might work really well yeah. for someone. 100%. Someone else would hate that. Someone else, um, <laughs> I met a few people like that, and I have to <laughs> smile because forgive me now. Um, but, you know, oh, I don't, he wants to give me a sleeping tablet. He wants to give me a psychotic, antipsychotic. <gasps> I will not put that into my body. My body is my temple that I have flooded every night with three bottles of wine. And you think, what the fuck? You have shot up every single bloody tablet. Uh, you had no idea where it came from. And you took it because it numbed you. And now you don't want to have a sleeping tablet. You're kidding me. That kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, sorry, yeah. but there are beliefs. So yes. what do you do with this person? So this yeah. person is absolutely staunch against medicine. But there might be actually might be a healing fun, yeah. aspect out there. Mm. That's right. There might be yeah. an, an, an energy healing yeah. that they are very susceptible to. Yeah. Um, the, and all of these things have a role. I love what you what you said there. The 
there are many different modalities that mm. can help you yeah. to become the new you, the new and improved version. Mm. And in my healing process, certainly many of these things happened um, at various times Synchronicity. because yeah. something needs to happen yeah. at one stage. I couldn't have, have done, I don't know, I a simple meditation to get through a withdrawal. I'm sorry, that doesn't work. No, sorry, you need to deal yeah, deal with the with the stuff. with the yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But then down no the one line, thing uh, will do anything. You've got to have your like a toolbox of different things that you exactly. can use at any time. I exactly, agree. exactly yeah. right. And therefore, yeah. that is, I think, the biggest thing that that sort of happened to me mm. from from going as a doctor to either tablets or syringe. You choose towards. Yeah. Okay, actually, as a pain physician, I learned learned that there was tablets syringe and physiotherapy and psychology yeah, okay it's getting a bit wider and then yeah. it got a bit further wider in my path to rehabilitation on to 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 becoming a better me when suddenly people came into my life they were healers mm. um with various modalities a and hypnotherapist how did you cope with a, that being being in the medical industry that all of a sudden there was because you're quite scientific aren't you i mean this is it's mm -hmm. science meets woo woo it's like whoa hang on how does that mm, did mm. you sort of like come up against a wall of oh hang on this is a crock of shit or oh actually i'm open to it or did your logical mind go mm. <laughs> oh, no this is my i love side. i love history i love history and i often put myself into the the shoes of my forebears let's say a, a doctor and anesthetist in the second world war in the normandy landings what he would have what would he what would he have had available to him? How yeah. would he have dealt with the problems? So I often do these mind games. I like it. You can, also, you can also imagine that if you were to go back, let's say just 100 years, and you would tell someone that one day you have got food that comes in cardboard and has a bit of plastic around it. You take it out of the cardboard, but keep the plastic on. And then you put it into a box... And that box has got a funny sound. <laughs> and you do three minutes and then you will burn yourself because it's not hot. And it's actually called food. Although there's it. probably nothing that is nourishing in there, but we still call it food. We still so eat could it. you imagine, what do you think this guy a hundred years ago, educated yeah. and really up to date up there would have thought about you? We were nuts. Absolutely exactly. nuts. Nowadays, microwaves are absolutely yeah. acceptable. Of course, microwaves. Yeah. You, your watch is giving you the signals through, uh, through various waves, etc. So these waves we accept and will utilize to switch on the tally yep. or to do whatever we do in our inter intelligent homes. Mm. So you're now telling me that these waves are okay, but if we actually think about waves that could possibly do something to our, our body, mm -hmm. uh, that, yes. sorry, can't do that. Yes. Sorry. But a that, lot of people that, are really freaking hypocritical when it comes to it. They believe in one no. way, like a radio, you know, like you can turn the radio mm -hmm. on. If you have it on the right frequency, it comes through. If you mm -hmm. don't, it doesn't. Well, That's everything right. has a frequency. Everything in this world has a frequency. That's exactly so right. Why are we any different if we're not quite on our right band? We're not actually going to see what we're wanting, are we? We're going exactly. to get all the static, crazy victim stuff, you know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. And it, it is, uh, yeah. And so, therefore, to answer your question, I actually don't have a problem with that. Maybe in the past open. I had a bit, but nowadays it's just there is so much which we don't know. Oh. 1956, the dean of Harvard University said, everything we know nowadays, 50% of that will be obsolete in 10 years' time because we have learned more. So that was 1956. Nowadays, we are talking about a time frame of about five years. So you're basically, everything you take for granted now in five years time, 50% of that is down the gurgler. It's wrong. Um, so there's so much that we don't know. There are so many new things about the brain that we learn, mm -hmm. that we learn from people who do the impossible. I mean, Bannister, he, it was, it was known no man can ever run the mile faster than four minutes. It's impossible. He can't do that. <laughs> Bang, he did it. Okay. <laughs> so in physiology, I remember things that I learned in physiology when I was a whippersnapper medical student when I was that, so 80s. Um, 
And nowadays, I see extreme athletes. They are breaking every single of these rules that were absolute in the 80s. No, you can't do that. Sorry, you can't do that. Bullshit. So there's so much that we don't know. Yeah, and I think you've got to be open uh, in this world now. You really have absolutely. to be completely open. Absolutely. Any possibility. And, and if we can combine that. So let's say for the sake of it, um, I am utilizing the medical side of things. I've done everything there. I still have got maybe ups and downs in my mood because that's normal. It's normal. It's human and experience. Exactly. It's so maybe... Well, exactly. They never. They, they, I never read the fine print when I. I, I want to see my contract, quite frankly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So imagine now that I find ways that don't take into account meds, etc., to actually make me feel good. This could be uh, sex, and I have a beautiful relationship, and I've got an orgasm. And I have got a smile on my face, and suddenly all those worries are away. Okay, works beautiful. for me. Yep. Um, if you, if it is suddenly a beautiful sunset somewhere at a lake, because I've chosen to go out, I've yeah. taken action to actually yep. get rid of of my house and everything that that uh, pushes down on me, and I go out there and I smell the the beautiful air, and I see the sunset, and I hear the cicadas in the background beautiful and i get the smile on my face i want to go to the beach now stop it (laughs) yeah exactly so these but these are all things these are all these are all things that i didn't have to pay much for it and it was for free just have to go out but i actually used it for a purpose yeah how about a nice music um how about let's go a bit more extreme out there how about exposing yourself to frequencies um that sound a bit funny like sort of funny bowls we go and, and <laughs> you know those kind of funny things yeah. um and imagine just that you're lying down and you're allowing yourself actually to relax whilst you're hearing these sounds and you take deep breaths in and out and with that, you're actually stretching your parasympathetic nervous system mm. and you're actually releasing your diaphragm as you're doing it and you're releasing your back muscles. Mm. And suddenly, half an hour later, you're waking up out of this little bit of a trance Magical. and yeah. then you're sort of floating out of the room. <laughs> you don't know if you're actually touching the ground, but you're actually just feeling good. Yeah. What's so wrong with that? Nothing. What's so wrong with that? Do I have to know how exactly it works in order to feel good? Nope. But yeah, we think we do. Nope. We, we're ah, thinking true. We, we're, 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 this human mind wants to attach to something to why we're feeling a certain thing or a certain way. <laughs> it's like, true. and when I did ayahuasca, the biggest thing I got was relinquish your mind. Stop trying to control uh-huh. everything. Just, it is what it is. Surrender. <laughs> And I'm like, hang on a minute, I'm exactly. a control freak. Yeah. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. <laughs> How am oh, I going to do that? Oh, please. It is, but you don't, I, I, I 100% agree, Stephen. You, we yeah. don't have to know yeah. why we feel yeah. a way. We just have to feel it and just be present exactly. in that beautiful moment exactly. of it. It's just, it's so beautiful. I, it really, really is when you I've can got, do that. I've got Everything's a healer intention. friend. Everything is an oh, intention. True? That's how I feel. <laughs> Put an intention to I've it. Got... I'm going to go down the beach and I'm going to feel magnificent because I'm going to look at all the beauty around me. Go do it. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Exactly. What's wrong yeah. with that? Yeah. What's wrong with that? Therapy. And <laughs> exactly. So, I think there are so many things that that can be utilized in mm. a logical and sensible way. And if you make an active plan for your day mm. and actually say, "I want to look after myself." Yesterday, I went for a swim. Okay. Um, and normally my mind goes all over the show and it did also there, but very soon I realized I was swimming at a speed. That was nuts. <laughs> I had done 500 meters and wow. And then I blinked, where did this five minutes, 500 meters go? It okay. was not that I swam faster. If at all, I swam a little, little bit slower. But yeah. what I was doing, I was actually meditating. Yeah. I was actually at some it's stage, I was no longer thinking about much. Mm. It, my body just did it. And I was in this different different plane. Yeah. And it was beautiful. Yeah. So sport, yeah. um, having a, a physical workout can be incredibly mm. satisfying. And so therefore, whilst we are talking 
about healing and recovery and rehabilitation, this is not that you necessarily have to, to climb the highest mountain where you find a very strange man sitting up there, freezing his nuts off and telling you everything that, that there is. No, yeah. it's actually, it's actually the, the realization that you can find happiness and fulfillment mm. by actually living in the moment and enjoying right now mm. what you're doing because you live with intention yeah. right now I'm having a ball of a time because I'm exploring that with you yeah. and I'm feeling I'm feeling exhilarated because you've asked me that question how did I actually feel about as a as the doctor mm -hmm. um, talking about healing does mm -hmm. that not go principally like that it challenged me it made me think yeah. Yeah. and that's beautiful yeah. so we are growing as we are doing that so i live intentionally in this moment i've that. exposed myself i've turned up i've yep. turned up as i said earlier I, I had a pity party i could have just as much said hey look nah i don't feel like it but no i forced myself to turn up yeah. now that's often yeah. the biggest thing in life i think so often, too isn't it yeah, so that, that's life for me nowadays that is mm. what I love to do. I'm addicted, but I'm addicted to life, to yeah. that life. I'm addicted to feeling low, but having now a skill set that I might choose if I want to, to get myself out of it. Mm. I, I know how to stop an anxiety attack dead mm. out of the water, bang, like that. I know when I feel really, really crappy that it that there is not something magic happening it means that i didn't look after myself yeah. i'm hungry angry lonely tired yeah and so i i you burned the candle within right you're not doing something within and it was funny because my next question was going to be to you how do you cope with temptation and you just answered it so hmm. like <laughs> oh yes and no yes and no temptation if you think a temptation in the alcoholic term mm. there is none more there is no more is honestly uh the, the thought of me now having a drink um it would be nice some of the more social things i would love mm. um for example to have an italian food and then a limoncello um thank you that is that goes together um to have greek food and an ouzo yes yeah. please french food pasties and a nice wine so those kind of things yeah, yes the, the okay the extra occasion of it the, the, the that's experience. right and the celebration the celebration yeah. of the alcohol yeah. and feeling that little bit disinhibited that yeah. feeling oh, i love it but it wouldn't stop there no that bottle of limoncello would be gone would be gone in no times yeah. and then i don't uh, know cycle starts no. yeah mm -hmm. yeah no yeah so no 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 that is no temptation but there are other things because then we need to talk about the thing called cross addiction because mm. you're an addict mm. end of the story so only just because you have just stopped drinking yeah. the next thing then is you're chain smoking like a chimney yeah and you stop the chain smoking and then suddenly there's no more cheesecake in a cheesecake shop because you have raided it <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> you've eaten all. it all <laughs> and then if you if you say no 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 i need to to now I, I can't have any more sweets then you go under this absolute madness i train four times That's a day two hours in the gym That's exactly Pilates, gym session, <laughs> and then yoga exactly. all in one. Three hours of fucking working out. That was me. See? I went the complete opposite, man. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because that's our cross addiction. We're just moving from one yeah. to the other. It's, it's whack-a-mole. Yeah, yeah, one comes out. No, there. Oh, there. I need there, to there. focus on something because if I don't, oh, my God, I want to fucking feel. I need to be doing something else. <laughs> that's that's so right. True. That's true isn't it oh that's that's us alcoholics or addicts shall i say in a nutshell yeah yeah and and for a while i was, I was sort of thinking well am i an addict am I, i'm an alcoholic but an addict is really drugs isn't it <laughs> and then i realized nah nah an addict is a, is a certain behavior it's a to be an addict is that you have got a medical disease yeah which affects your reward system and your memory mm, ultimately I love that Mm. exactly it is a medical disease and and you don't need to be ashamed because and you know no one would mental illness hmm? is a disease mental illness is a disease and everyone's like oh no i'm mentally and people shame mm. themselves for it you know what and i that, used to think mm -hmm. i am so freaking like i was brought up very strong single parent 
Um, you know, like it was, I was working when I was knee high to a grasshopper and, and I, I was in survival mode most of my life. So, you know, yep. Yep. to me, it's just, it was the way of life. It really was. And that's what built where I, where I am, where, where I went to really. Hmm. Were you proud of that work ethic? It created a lot of cycles. It oh. created a lot of cycles. I but was, when you were in I didn't it, get to be a little you... child. I didn't get to be a kid. Oh. Oh. I had to go oh. straight into working, and I always was always in that that you know work, 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 which had a I whole hear number. you. Yeah, I hear yeah. you. Yeah, that's true. And that was me. That was I me. Well, that was. Yeah. You know, I was. I was uh, at school. I was mediocre at best. And then one day, my dad said, oh, my stepdad said, hey, look, um, if you're the best in, in your class for an exam, you get five Deutschmark. And if you're the second best, two Deutschmarks and anything less than that, one can't. And turns out I'm greedy. <laughs> and so and turns out that was what I needed at that moment in time. And suddenly I realized, oh, oh that's cool. And then yeah. the first time that you're best, best in a class, when you were mediocre, people didn't call me a nerd they actually applauded and said yay and suddenly there was this whoa and then suddenly maybe i uh, i was shy also and suddenly i the really cool girls came to me and sort of said hey look can we can you can you meet with me and uh, just tell me a bit about math yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) i I come wherever you want me (laughs) okay so suddenly there were secondary gains not just being the best at school but then also i come from uh, quite a poor working class family um and so from the word go i was working three afternoons uh in in the week um for for stacking wood in in a in a shop um and you know filling up the shelves so that was all normal for me and it kept going like that so it was not just good enough that i was the best at school uh i I became best at class and best at school Mm. um but it i also needed to do the work somehow or and that was expected of me and that was always a man works kind of a thing and Mm. If you want to make something out of yourself, you are better going to university. None in my family had ever been to university. So I managed to do so. And a lot of things, but there was always pressure on me, I must admit. Um, maybe a lot of pressure for myself, uh, yeah. a lot of pressure certainly from society, from my parents. Um, yeah. I don't think I, wanna... I was ever good enough. I yeah. don't think I ever felt yeah. I, I ever felt enough um so it was weird that's why you strive to make that five dollar mark because you want to be good enough for your parents yeah something like that if you got that then you had some sort of satisfaction it was like a reward Mm. and that's funny that's how we treat it like (laughs) you know you can actually Mm. treat your kids like like i say don't treat your kid like a dog don't give it a treat for what it does give it love no matter what you know what i mean because it it does it creates that well if i don't get it then oh no you know and you feel less of a person so it's it was a whole different cycle, isn't it? <laughs> Meet the Robinsons. Meet the Robinsons is a is a cartoon film um, that highlights that so beautiful. Um, it's all about the time machine. He ends up in the future, and um, in in his new family in the future, um, he really messes up around the dinner table, and uh, he tries to to create this machine that gives ketchup and mustard at the same time, and it explodes, and everyone is bathed in ketchup and mustard, and <laughs> complete silence and then suddenly everyone goes yay <laughs> and the, the kids do that what, what the hell is going on and they said great you failed you yes. learned something yes and it was that attitude it was so beautiful yeah I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. And goosebumps, goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> this is so beautiful i yeah. never had that i never had that yeah. to to learn that it's normal to fail I always had to be the best. I always had yeah. to be superb, perfect. And needless to say, you can't. So therefore, I always set myself up to fail. Yeah. And by definition, therefore, I was a failure. Good enough, yeah. And, yeah. and it's just, oh. It's a vicious really. cycle, isn't it? Really, really is. But when you can start to understand it and you can start break down the cycles and you can start stopping it from generations to happen. So I really mm. believe that the work that we're doing now 
yeah. is the most precious work that we can do. If you don't do anything else in this world, start to heal your your, your trauma, start to heal different things exactly. in your body, start to exactly. really look at what you need to look at because the little people that are coming behind you watch everything and they learn and they're programmed <sighs> for you. So exactly. it's such exactly. important friggin' work. It's more important than going and putting food on the table pretty much. You know mm. what I mean? Like it's 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 so important it's so so important mm. make the make people and feel like they're worthy no matter what even mm. if they fail yeah. as you say i always say there's no such thing as failure people are actually more scared of success than what they are of failure mm. um you actually ooh, that's a completely different topic isn't it yeah, but yeah you're right, we're gonna do you're that right. <laughs> no no it's actually really good i mean that's how many hours one. have we got yeah, <laughs> that's right. Okay, so we meet again. <laughs> this this will continue in, in volume two of our little volume story here. I know it because it space. is so true. It's true. Now, Isn't it? On a previous it's, episode, it's... we said. <laughs> it sounds sound like love boat. I know it does. <laughs> I think the reality is we we are we are very comfortable in, in a place where we are. And that is what is deeply ingrained in us because um, at least we know what we have got. Mm -hmm. That might be a toxic relationship, but there's this hope that this other person, they will just show me again that little love, mm -hmm. uh, that those those beautiful signals that he gave me when he was groom grooming me. Um, and, or whatever it is, uh, it's, it's, it's okay. We are just getting by, but at least I've got a job to now actually say no to that job and go out, be yeah. self-employed, et cetera, and take yeah. the risk. Ooh, ooh. And it's the same with success. Yeah. You're okay as you are, and now you're putting yourself out there. And immediately the imposter syndrome, who the fuck do you think you are? Oh, Going on to a show with Lisa <laughs> Nadler. You're kidding me. Who are you to tell Lisa anything oh, about you? Goodness. You have no training. You're not a life coach. You're not nothing. Who are you? That's okay. ego at its friggin' biggest, isn't it? Oh, oh, it's a sneaky little sucker, that one. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. And so and it's these are constant things. But at least nowadays, I know about yeah. that that voice or those voices. Yep, and I, I can say, hello, yeah, okay. I, I, it's a good argument, but no, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm busy because I'm having a good time with Lisa, okay? So, <laughs> okay. <off. laughs> <laughs> exactly. No. And that is that is what you need to do is sometimes yeah. the key to your growth and to your to your to your moving forward is simply to show up, to not let these voices yeah. hinder you, to not let them sabotage you, because that's really what that is. Mm -hmm. The procrastination is that you're so afraid of what yes. might happen that you just, oh, no, it's much easier not to do it. Because it is easier not um, to do something. It's so much easier. Exactly. And then you can justify it, and, and, and which is me, the queen mm. of justification. You can justify it. You can be like, <laughs> oh, well, you know, I didn't really feel like it, and it's going to uh, be better uh, next uh. time, and blah, 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 exactly. blah. Exactly, exactly. Which is, yeah. Yeah. So guys, if you listen to that out there, uh, if there is if there is anything that you thought I really one day should, what the hell are you waiting for? Mm, you want a really? podcast? Ah, oh, I don't have a have a microphone, I don't have really the lighting set up. Stop it. Oh, okay. Why? You want <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. So here we are. Lisa, we just said that before we started. Uh we were laughing about I your temporary setup. And, you can hardly see oh. me. Oh please, and that is that is. But we made it work. Yeah, and you look basically. At it. Yeah. And look, and what was what happened? Connection. Okay. Lisa and I actually, I I just had a few ideas from a photography and filming point of view, yeah. and I was able to assist her a bit, your and bang, we were able to get on. That's with it. what it is. It's helping each yeah. other. It's connecting and sharing our wisdom. Boom, boom, fucking boom. <laughs> and and now imagine you just turn up to some place who yeah. actually um is full of people that you actually admire who you maybe one day would like to be like mm -hmm. let that be maybe you want to get into real estate investing property investing because you have no idea how to build yourself a pension um and maybe there might be a way well if you actually meet the right people if you try to go to maybe an, an, a conference of such people um and some networking do you think 
they will not actually share things. Yeah. So you could learn something. So if you if you now make yourself the dumbest person in a team, can you imagine that all the other people around you will a guide you, teach you, and and maybe help you? you? Up. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. if we do that with with property investment or with you becoming self employed, how about your relationship? So if you maybe struggle with your relationship, could it be secretly that you're struggling with yourself? Mm, no. And if you suddenly, exactly, if you suddenly actually sort your own shit out, um, could you imagine really that? Where would that be? Exactly. How powerful That's will you be? <laughs> oh, please. That happened with my wife and me. Um, we were having routinely the Third World War. Honestly, nuclear uh, holocaust is is uh, just a garden party compared with what we were going through virtually every other night. Yeah. And nowadays, we have learned to recognize our weaknesses. Um, it's like, like learning a different language. Mm. She says something, and what she really means is... Boom. And it's sort of, I've learned that language yeah. and she knows my triggers. She knows my language. She, and even if I am still an enigma for her at times, despite the fact that I think I'm communicating well, she says, no, I don't understand you. She actually says that. She mm -hmm. actually says, hey, look, right now, I think you're an asshole because you looked at me in that way. And I said, darling, I, I just, that was a, a, a look of love. Are you sure? <laughs> and I, that's, you know, those kind of things. You know she verbalizes it. She yeah. verbalizes it. Yeah. She yeah. actually says, no, actually, um, I yeah. misunderstood you. I misread mm -hmm. you. And maybe it has to do with the fact that I haven't had any food since, since breakfast. And I'm really hangry now. Whenever we're okay. triggered, whenever we have a go, it's actually not about the other person. It's always about mm. us. To shape. To shame. Mm. So it's those kind of things. So guys, uh, come onto this path of self-fulfillment, of healing. Sometimes words don't come right. Um, they they or they don't sound right. For me, they mean something. The healing, I truly have been healing, and I will be healing until I basically oh. leave this earth. Yeah, um, it never stops. But. <laughs> and it's just Lisa and I sort of happen to be a little bit probably further down the line, maybe compared with you, um, or you have actually made a start and now you're treading water because circumstances have changed. Mm. You have been successful in healing for a certain period of time um, or certain trauma. And now you're stuck because you might not realize what is actually the next step. But so guys, just go out there. Live your life to the fullest. Mm. The past does not equal the future. Yeah. And your past does <laughs> not it. define you. Yes. And it's, it's, uh, Lisa is laughing because we both have exactly the it's same the same thing. Um, that is honestly. It's so true though. It doesn't. Abs oh, please. And for me, it's hard because I still get flashbacks. I still get flashbacks from stupid things I did 30 years ago. And it's just, ah, the <laughs> that was the past yes. 30 years ago. I've made amends. Mm. I know I've been a dick when I, when I treated that girl in that way mm. uh, and, and dropped her like a hot potato because she was, things got boring after three months. Yeah. I know I hurt her. Yeah. Okay. That was then. I know that I'm a dick. I was a dick. Nowadays I'm a man with actually integrity. Yeah. And if I say I do something, I will do it. Yeah. So I've learned from that. Absolutely. But and it's still, the biggest thing you can do is learn. Well, please. Yeah. Integrity. Yeah. yeah. So if there's one thing that you could leave the audience in, uh, audience mm -hmm. with, what would that be? Anything, absolutely anything that comes to your mind, one little thing that you'd like to leave them, apart from your gorgeous byline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, oh, there's so much. I think. I know, right? Never. <laughs> never don't give up don't give up oh, I love that. you your darkness right now might be so pitch black that you think there's absolutely no hope mm. and there's absolutely no help these are lies that depression or trauma or alcohol or other drugs tell you yeah these are lies absolute mean lies as if a bully is trying to hurt you that's the same way that these diseases are talking to you yeah. do not believe them mm. tread water there is hope mm. there's i read about this beautiful study um ages ago in the 50s 
where a researcher has put rats into water and just see how long they can. You saw that too on, on LinkedIn. That was that. And they basically tried to see how long the rats will swim. And basically after 15 minutes, they decided not enough is enough and they drowned. And then a new bunch of rats, they put them again in the water, but rescued them after 13, 14 minutes and basically oh had God. them on land, gave them a chance, then put them back into the water to see how long they now yeah. actually would last. And according to that, what we read there, it was 60 hours because suddenly there was hope there and the hope mm. is, is there and it's, it keeps you alive. If you read at uh, read Viktor Frankl, um, his book that he is a psychiatrist who was in a concentration camp, and he wrote about his experience. It's a beautiful mm. wisdom, wisdom of man. I, I've forgotten the, the exact oh, title. Um, it's exact. Yes. It's a quite uh, it's small book, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, it I is. I just read it. it oh, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. It's small, isn't book. it? And it's it's called? about hope. How can someone? Uh, survive under under circumstances yeah. that are virtually guaranteed death is waiting for you mm. yet he survived and and there are there are other survivors many of those people if you look at at the difference between between survivors and victims mm. it's that the survivors were able to maintain a degree of oh, hope right. yeah and therefore that is my most important bit Love if it. this was a key message to take home there is hope out there you just have to tread water mm -hmm. just that a little bit longer. Yeah. And you might not, you might not see it yet, but there is hope about that. Oh, I love that. I love that. That is brilliant. <laughs> it is absolutely beautiful way to, to end it. Yeah. I love it. Oh, thank you so much, Stephen. That was so much fun. I knew when we were laughing for about 10 minutes before we even started. I was like, how are we going to get a word out? For goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> because thank you so because we can laugh about on. We can oh. laugh about ourselves, and that's the beautiful thing. Yeah. Uh, there is, a, we we don't take ourselves so serious anymore, and that's also one of the side effects from actually living a cool life. Yeah. So, guys, is it's perfect. Just yeah. come on, come for a ride. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> well, thank you oh. so much for being a divine guest on on the show. I've had such a good time, and thank you for sharing your wisdom, your knowledge, and your teachings. Really beautiful, oh. absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So cool. thank you very Maybe much. Maybe one more thing. Yes. One more thing to say, mm -hmm. uh, guys. If you want to know anything more about me, go to mystepstosobriety.com. Mystepstosobriety.com. Um, it's also the book of my title, my title of my book this way around, My Steps to Sobriety. And if you go to mystepstosobriety.com, you will find all the, the cool things that I'm involved in, the books that I've written, my show. If you wanted to be a guest, uh, if you wanted to co-author some books with me, because at the moment we are working on some amazing projects out there. So it's lovely. There's connection out there. And sometimes um, you come along for a ride and you have no idea where that leads yeah, you. Yeah, I so really it's, These are good times. Definitely. So, and so, Lisa, connection's the key. I really believe Isn't it? That. Lisa, yeah. thank you so much for having me welcome. on your show. It was you're an welcome. absolute honor. <laughs> so you're welcome. And that is another beautiful episode of The Art of Quantum Healing. Mwah. Thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel and help us grow the community by sharing it with your friends. I am your host, Lisa Nadler, and this is The Art of Quantum Healing.